Hi, I am Alex Thompson, and I'm 30 years old. I started a tech startup three years ago, and business has been flourishing, to say the least. I am in a steady relationship with my longtime girlfriend, Sarah. I met Sarah at a coffee shop two years ago. I had gone there for a business meeting, which got canceled at the last minute. I was about to leave when my eyes fell on the most gorgeous girl sitting two tables away from me with a bunch of her girlfriends. I have always been a little shy about approaching girls, but I knew that I would probably never see her again, and this was my only chance. So I mustered up some courage and approached her. Hi there, I am Alex. I just saw you across the table and found you very pretty. Can I ask you out for dinner sometime? And what makes you think I will go out for dinner with a stranger from a cafe? Please don't get me wrong. I am a decent guy. I. Sarah and her girlfriend started laughing, seeing how embarrassed I was. I turned around to leave when I heard a voice from behind. By the way, I'm Sarah. I turned around immediately and noticed her writing something on the tissue paper. Soon, she handed over the paper to me. It was her phone number. I couldn't believe my luck. She gave me the most gorgeous smile I had ever seen in my entire life. I'll call you. Okay. I waved her goodbye and left from there, trying my best to hide my excitement. I wanted to call her immediately but waited for a day. What if she felt that I was too desperate? The next day, I called her and fixed up a dinner date with her at my favorite restaurant. I was nervous when I went to pick her up for the date. She looked simple yet gorgeous as she entered my car. Hi, I hope you didn't have any trouble finding my address. No, not at all. I just had a nice long drive. Ha, huh, I told you I would manage on my own. You didn't need to come to pick me up. That's all right, the pleasure's all mine. The place is a little in the interior. It must be difficult for you to commute from here. Actually, no, the station is nearby, and I love walking. Atlanta is an expensive city, and this place was the cheapest rent I could find around. Not everyone is lucky like you to have a Porsche to drive around. I didn't mean it that way. Actually, I was just, relax, I was just joking. So Sarah, what do you do? I am an elementary school teacher at a private school nearby. I love to paint, dance, and travel. What about you? I worked as a project manager for a company for two years after completing my MBA. Then I quit my job and started my own AI-based startup. I love to travel too, but due to my busy schedule now, most of my traveling is only work-related. Oh, that's kind of sad. What's the point of making so much money when you don't even have the time to enjoy doing what you like? It's not like that, actually. I am young and need to work hard to have a secure future. Sure you do. But what about your present? Don't you want to enjoy that too? Sarah had got me thinking. I had never realized up until now that I had become robotic due to my work commitments and had completely forgotten to enjoy the little pleasures of life. I then decided to ditch my fancy restaurant, for which I had made reservations for dinner, and instead decided to take her to a local food joint of her choice nearby. It was the most amazing date I had ever had. There was delicious food, drinks, and a lot of laughter. We started meeting up regularly, and I soon developed a strong liking for her. With Sarah around, I could be myself, I could be carefree, free-spirited, and even silly without the fear of being judged. Just six months after dating her, I knew that she was the special one I had been looking for all my life. I asked her to move in with me and she said yes. Just a few days after moving in, I decided to introduce Sarah to my mom, who lived just a couple of miles away in Birmingham. Mom, this is Sarah the most amazing woman I have ever met, and Sarah is my mom, my pillar of strength. Hello, Margaret. It is so good to meet you. Alex keeps talking about you all the time. Really? I hope he has good things to say about me. Of course. He told me how his father passed away when he was just 12 and how you single-handedly raised him to be the successful man that he is today. Well, that's because he means the world to me. But he has not really told me much about you. I must say you are quite pretty. Thank you, Margaret. So tell me, Sarah, what do you do for a living? I am an elementary school teacher. Oh, so you may have had a tough time living in a high maintenance city like Atlanta up until now, of course. What do you mean by that? Honey, don't get me wrong there. I just meant that with a simple job as a teacher, it must have been difficult to maintain your daily expenses. But now that you are with Alex, things must be a lot easier for you financially. It's not like that at all. I get paid pretty decently to manage my daily expenses. In fact, I even have some good savings. 
As for Alex, I don't see how he would make things easier for me financially. We don't mix our finances. I am feeling really hungry. Mom, I am tired of driving all the way to here. Can we please have dinner? I tried to change the topic, but I could sense the air of tension between Sarah and my mom even while we were having dinner. We had planned to stay with mom for two days before returning home, but I was already regretting my decision. Later that night, once Sarah was off to sleep, I went to mom's room to have a private chat with her. Mom, what was this behavior with Sarah? What? I think I was really sweet to her. I even called her pretty when she is actually quite average looking. Mom, please stop this. Don't make me regret my decision to get Sarah here to meet you. And Sarah is not average looking, she is the most beautiful girl I have ever met. That's what young people like you say in love. Look, Alex, I don't want to beat around the bush. I want you to get rid of this girl as soon as possible. What are you talking about? I am in love with her. How could you even say such a thing? Can't you see it, Alex? She is with you for your money. She is an ordinary girl, and she has hit the jackpot dating a millionaire like you. You have got this completely wrong, Mom. Sarah is not like that. She is not money-minded at all. Do you know she is even paying me rent after moving in with me even though I insisted otherwise? Oh, come on. She is just pretending to be nice to you so you don't doubt her. And how much rent is she paying you anyway? I am sure it's not enough to stay comfortably in your luxurious mansion. If she would really pay the rent your house is worth, she would be ripped off her entire month's salary. I have had enough of this. I think I will cut short my trip and leave tomorrow itself with Sarah. Don't do that, Alex. You have come to visit me after such a long time. I thought I would spend some quality time with my son for the next two days. If you really want to spend time with me, you will have to learn to respect Sarah and my choice of living with her. You cannot disrespect her like this. I will not tolerate it. Cool down, son. I was just trying to protect you. I have years of experience dealing with different kinds of people after your father's death. I can see through a person's intentions just by meeting him or her for the first time. I can make out that Sarah is not what you think she is. You are wrong, Mom. I am sure about it. She makes me really, really happy. All these years, I have been trying to establish my startup and have completely forgotten about my personal happiness. She has taught me how to put myself before my work. If she is that important to you, son, then I will try to make peace with it. I will not be rude to her or pass below the belt comments if it makes you happy, although I still feel that she is just after your money. Mom. But, but, I hope I am wrong for your sake, and I promise to behave myself with her around. Would you please now stay here for the next two days as we had planned earlier? Okay, Mom. If you keep your promise, I'll stay. Thank you. It really means a lot to me. And thank you, Mom, for understanding me and not being stubborn. The pleasure's all mine. Now go get some sleep. You must be tired. Although my mother had promised me that she would be cordial with Sarah, knowing my mom, I had my doubts. Once she would form a perception about someone, it was very difficult to get her to change her mind about the same. But I was in for a pleasant surprise. The next two days, Mom did not do or say anything that would hurt Sarah. I can't really say that they got along like a house on fire, but at least things were cordial and amicable. Even Sarah remarked to me that she felt that my mom was a different person than when she first met her. When I met Margaret for the first time, I thought she hated me. But in the last two days, she seems to have changed. I actually had a word with her. Regarding? Regarding you, regarding us. Sarah, the thing is that my mom is a little possessive about me. After my dad passed away, she did not marry again just to look after me. I am her only family. Whenever I go out with any girl, she starts finding faults in her, even if they do not exist. But, but what? But I explained to her that you were not just any girl. You are special, and you mean a lot to me. And I guess she understood. I am special to you? Of course you are. That's why I got you here to introduce you to my mother. That means a lot to me. You are special to me, too. I was worried that our relationship would be affected if your mother did not like me. But I am glad you sorted it out. We soon said our goodbyes to my mom and left for our home. I was glad with the way things eventually turned out, or so I thought. The next couple of months were the happiest days of my life. Every moment that I spent with Sarah, I fell in love with her even more. We traveled together to many nearby places, 
and while exploring these new places, we also explored new things to love about each other. I wanted to take her around the world to exotic locations, but she always insisted on splitting the cost of travel and would choose nearby, affordable locations to travel to. I respected her choice, and honestly, it did not really matter to me which place we went to as long as she was traveling with me. I would look forward to going home from work every single day so that I could spend some quality time with her. We would cook together, watch movies, cuddle, talk about our day at work, and discuss our future plans together. Life was perfect. Little did I know that this perfect life was going to be short-lived. I still remember the day when my life took an unexpected turn. It was a normal Wednesday morning. I just got out of the shower and was getting ready for work when I reached out for my watch and ring which I keep in my drawer. My watch was there in the drawer, but the ring was missing. I couldn't believe my eyes and started searching for it frantically. I looked under the dressing table, near my bed, washroom, kitchen, living room, and almost all the corners of my house. After an hour of frantic searching, I sat down on my bed distressed. That gold ring belonged to my late father. I wore it every day, and it made me feel his presence with me all the time. The ring was my lucky charm. Moreover, it had sentimental value for me, and I had been religiously wearing it for the last many years. I clearly remembered removing the watch and ring from my hand the night before and keeping them in their usual place. I failed to understand how it could disappear like this, and how come the watch was left untouched. I immediately called Sarah, who had already left for work, to ask her if she had, by any chance, seen the ring. Hi Alex, how come you are calling me at this hour? Sarah, have you, by any chance, seen my ring? It must be at its usual place. It's not. I have been searching for it all over the house but cannot find it. I think it is lost. I don't know what to do. My father had left it for me. It was the last memory I had of him. Alex, please calm down. We will find it. You must have kept it somewhere and forgotten about it. Listen, I wish I could help right now, but I am in the middle of a class right now. But once I get back home in the evening, we will search for it. Please don't worry so much and go to work right now. We will figure it out in the evening. Okay. I hung up with a heavy heart. I was hoping that perhaps Sarah might have seen the ring somewhere, but I was wrong. I then called my mom to inform her about the lost ring. Hi, Alex. How are you doing, my son? You seem to have forgotten your mother now that you have a girlfriend. It's been weeks since I last heard your voice. Mom, I have some bad news to share with you. Have you finally broken up with your gold digger girlfriend? Mom, please. This has nothing to do with Sarah. I just called you to inform you that I have lost my dad's gold ring. I feel terrible about it. I remember keeping it on top of my dressing table yesterday before going off to sleep. But it is missing now, and I have searched my entire house but it is nowhere to be found. What are you saying, Alex? How could you be so irresponsible? I feel so bad about this. I really don't know what to say, but I know exactly what to say. I had warned you before, but you never listened to me and see what has happened now. You had to pay the price for not being sensible. I don't get it. What are you trying to say? Marigurit? Oh, Simon's son, you are a sensible businessman and you are pretending to not understand such a simple thing. Or are you still in denial? Look, Mom, I am already very worried. Please tell me directly what you are trying to say. It's Sarah Alex. She has stolen your father's ring. It was an antique ring that was passed on for many generations until it came to you from your father. I am sure she must have gotten a good price for it. What rubbish. You don't even know what exactly happened to the ring, and you are just accusing Sarah to vent out your frustration. I know you don't quite like her, but that does not mean that you call her a thief. Where else could the ring have gone, Alex? Think about it, it's just the two of you staying in that house. You said that you clearly remember keeping the ring on your table last night, then how can the ring disappear suddenly? Maybe I did not keep it in its place properly yesterday. I may have accidentally lost it somewhere before returning home yesterday. Or maybe I have not searched the house properly yet, I may have kept the ring somewhere else by mistake and forgotten about it. I am sure it was my mistake somewhere, and Sarah has nothing to do with this. Who are you trying to fool, Alex? And why are you trying to cover up for her? You know that it can be only her and no one else, right? No, you are wrong, Mom. I will prove to you that you are wrong. Look, Alex, what has happened cannot be undone. But you now need to get rid of her ASAP. She will cause more trouble for you in the future if you don't get rid of her right away. That's not happening, Mom. 
I will talk to her today and clear up all your misunderstandings about her. What do you expect her to say, Alex? Of course, she will deny everything. But you need to use your common sense and stop living in denial. No, this can't be true. I hung up the call immediately, refusing to accept the possibility of Sarah stealing my most loved possession. I did not go to work that day and kept looking for the ring in my house over and over again with no success. My mom's words kept ringing in my ears and I kept brushing them aside, thinking that Sarah could never do something like that to me. I was lost in my thoughts when the door to the house opened. It was Sarah. You came back from work early today, Alex? I am so sorry I could not call you during the day as I was caught up with a lot of work today. Are you okay? Do you want me to help you search for the ring? What's the time? Did you come back early today? Alex, it's 6 p.m. I came back from work as usual. What's wrong with you? You did not go to work. Oh, it's evening already. I did not realize. I was searching for the ring and I was thinking maybe. It's okay, Alex. Gather yourself. I know it was a very precious ring for you, but you need to relax. You cannot get so worked up over it. I am sure you have not had any breakfast or lunch either. Let me make you something to eat. We will then figure this out. Sarah, wait. When did you last see my ring? I don't remember, Alex. You were always wearing it, so I have never really paid much attention to it. Did you see it in my drawer last night or this morning? No. Your drawer is near the side of the bed that you sleep on. I never really go there. Amen dot dot dot. But it was just the two of us in the house. Sarah and I remember keeping my watch and the ring on the table last night before sleeping. So, what are you trying to say, Alex? How can the ring just disappear and the watch next to it stay as it is? Are you trying to say that I took your ring, Alex? Sarah, I really, really love you. If you have taken the ring by mistake, please give it back to me. The ring has a lot of sentimental value for me. This is ridiculous. You are accusing me. It's not that, Sarah. Sometimes the human mind makes us do ridiculous things. I cannot believe this. Just hear yourself out, Alex. Sarah, what we have between the two of us is very, very special. I don't want to lose it, but... But what? You think we can be together if you can't trust me? No, Sarah. I don't want to do this. It is probably the hardest thing I have done in my life. But I don't think we should be together any longer. We should break up. But if you can just accept your mistake and return the ring, we can still work something out. I can't believe that I fell in love with a shallow man like you in the first place, Alex. Thanks for your kind offer, Mr. Alex. But I do not have your ring in the first place. And secondly, I do not desire to live with a man who does not value my self-respect. Goodbye. Tears flowed down my eyes as I saw Sarah rushing to the room to pack her stuff. Sarah came out with her suitcase a couple of minutes later. Her eyes were red with tears and anger. She did not look at me even once. She simply kept the house keys on the dining table and left. I was devastated. My mom assured me that I had done the right thing and not having Sarah around would only be beneficial for me in the long run. But I felt that I had lost my soulmate. Had I done the right thing? Did Sarah really take the ring? What if I had wrongly accused her? If it was not Sarah who had taken it, where did the ring actually go? These questions were killing me, but I had no answers. I had never felt so lonely. It had only been a couple of days since I broke up with Sarah, but life seemed to have come to a standstill. I started working for long hours at work, avoided going home, and felt depressed all the time. A week later, I was about to leave for work when the doorbell rang. When I went to answer the door, I saw Sarah standing there. The moment I saw her, I wanted to give her a tight hug and tell her to start all over again, letting the bygones be bygones. She pulled out a pouch from her purse. My ex-girlfriend confronted me and disclosed that she had the ring with her in that pouch. She also removed her mobile phone from her purse. So, was I right all along in suspecting her? Guess so. But the video she showed me of my mom left me speechless. I immediately took Sarah and we drove to Birmingham to meet my mom. The couple of hours we spent during our car ride were the most silent ride I had ever had with Sarah. She continuously looked outside the window and avoided any conversation or eye contact with me. I had lots to say but could not gather the courage to talk to her. We soon reached my mom's place. Alex, such a pleasant surprise. But what is she doing with you? I thought you had broken up with her. Just as you had planned? 
What do you mean? I took out Sarah's phone and showed her the two videos that she had shown me. The first was a video outside my house of the day on which the ring had gone missing. The video showed my mom sneaking into my house at around 3 a.m. with the spare keys I had given her and leaving the house about 10 minutes later. The second video was that of an antique shop taken two days after the ring went missing. It clearly showed my mom selling off the missing gold ring at the shop and taking money for it. I was furious and asked my mom for an explanation. Dear, I did it for your own good. This girl is a gold digger. You wouldn't listen to me. So I had to do all this so that you could get rid of her. I had to even sell your father's last memory so that. So that I would never find out anything about that ring, right? I cannot believe that my mother, who I have admired and looked up to all my life, can do something like this to me. The way Alex spoke to me the day the ring went missing, I knew that he was being influenced by someone. And who else could it be but you, Margaret? I always knew you hated me, but to take away your son's most precious thing just to break us up. Don't you think you went too far? I had to really work extra hard in the last seven days to collect these videos and get your true face out in front of your son. Alex, don't listen to her. She just wants to break our relationship. She doesn't want to do that. It was you who plotted to break my relationship with Sarah. And I was so stupid that I listened to all that trash you filled up in my head. This is it, Mom. We are done. I do not want to meet you or talk to you ever again. Alex, don't do that. How will I live without you? It would be difficult for me as well to not have you in my life. But I have to do this for my peace of mind. I cannot ever forgive you for what you have done. I walked away from there, promising to never see my mother again. On the way back, I apologized to Sarah. Sarah, I am really, really sorry. I know I don't deserve you, but if you could please give me one last chance, I promise to never break your trust again. I don't know, Alex, if I can trust you again. You believed your mother and labeled me as a thief. Not once did you think that you could be insulting and hurting me with your false allegations. I love you, but I don't know if I can be with a man who does not trust or value my self-respect. I understand, Sarah, but the last seven days have been hellish without you. I can't imagine how my life will be without you altogether. Please give me one more chance. I will try to get your trust back and promise to treat you with dignity and respect. I did not do all this to get back together with you, Alex. I just wanted to prove my innocence. She then removed the ring from her overcoat pocket and handed it over to me. I wish you a good life ahead, Alex. No, no, Sarah. Please don't say this. I know you cannot live without me either. Can't we find a middle ground on this? I later found out that Sarah had used up all her life savings to get my ring back from the antique shop. I felt even more ashamed, doubting a selfless girl like her who loved me so dearly. I have only my lucky stars to thank, as Sarah decided to give our relationship one more chance after a lot of persuasion. This time she decided not to live with me. I am slowly, but surely, starting to win her trust back. I know it is a long, difficult road ahead of me. But this time I am willing to give it my all and not let anyone come in the way of our relationship. Sarah has become a lot quieter and less expressive than she was before, but I understand that it is only me who is to blame. I am determined to bring back the old, chirpy and vibrant Sarah with all my love and affection. As for my mother, I am not in touch with her at all and decide to keep it that way.